Ten years ago, it was $25 million a year of uh, racehorses. This year, it'll be $250 million. So that's, uh, that's big. We now sell more horses uh, by value, by prize money won, by any, by any measure. So it's, uh, yeah, wow. it's obviously Jerry success. knows what he's doing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> um, more than 1,600 young horses are, are going to be auctioned off in the next nine days, Jerry. Barretts particularly wants to know what makes a, a good horse. What, she, what should he and everyone else look out for when they're buying one? Uh, when he turns up at the sales, make sure he outbids everyone else. <laughs> <laughs> pay for a horse well, there's the problem. The got. <laughs> <laughs> what, but what do you blokes, what do you guys look for? Uh, well, we, we look for a lot of money to be... <laughs> <laughs> to be <laughs> turned over at this sale. We look for very simple people who've made their money very easily and want to lose it just as well. <laughs> this, this is the quickest and most certain way. Yep, yep Simon and Brett's <laughs> fall into that category. Gee, you're not talking up, you two, I tell you. <laughs> but what well, do you look for? We, what, we, how can you find a good horse? What do you look for, Jerry? You've got, you've got stacks of them. Do you have a formula in, in what you're going to buy? Yeah, I've got a formula. The more you buy, the better your chances. I've got about eight or 900 horses. Singo's only got a couple of hundred, so I'm guaranteed to beat him. So my formula it's not, works. It's not, it's not working. It's not working. <laughs> <laughs> well, I also feed mine and train them. And, and this, is, this is where Jerry cuts a couple of corners. Yeah, yeah well, I reckon I can, with, with my numbers, right, I don't have to feed him as much. And I can still beat him, so I'm going to win, don't worry. <laughs> so is it as is romantic no science, right? as I would imagine that there's a chance I could go along and spend 150 bucks, buy yourself some sort of old mag and turn her into a winner? I know Singo's had a romantic liaison with a horse, but that was a long time ago. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, it was easy to please then. Yeah. But we, got a, we, we all heard of a horse called Takeover Target that was bought for $1,200 by a taxi driver. And it's now the world's best sprinter. So there is fairy tales. If it was all the best breeding and the best vetting and the best legs and the best x-rays, we'd all bid on that one horse and it would win the race. But in fact, you've got 1,600 horses here. Probably they'll be bought by a 1,000 different people, all with different opinions. And only one's going to win the million dollars next year and one's going to win the million dollars three-year-old the year after. So the, the fact is we all have absolutely different opinions and none of them are infallible. Can imagine it's no different to buying footballers, he'd buy Alfie Langer if you saw him parade around as a yearling or, or Johnny <laughs> Rape or you might buy Darren Lockyer but you're not going to buy Petra and a Sarah and a Siva, are you? you know, it's, it's just, my theory of breeding is you get the best you get the best athletes and you put them together like I have a horse called Publishing it's favourite in a three year old because Tessa Ross and the dad was the fast boy fastest boy that year, Sally Magic was the fastest girl like Ian Thorpe and Gian Rooney would have been that year bang, you put them together, you're going to you're going to finish up with a champion, you know? And bang is the opera with work. humans, you need a bit of... With humans, there's a bit of flowers and dinners and wine. You've got to do that before you can actually breed champions. So, that's so why Steffi Graf and Andre Agassi have got a man, do you reckon? <laughs> Steffi Graf and Andre Agassi, yeah. And Greg Norman and, and, and that one of his. But a bit late, you know, a bit late, maybe. Now, Jerry, no, you... Modern science. Now, Jerry, you've brought over actress Tara Reid to help out at the Magic Millions. Now, what is it with you blokes? You're trying to outdo... Um, John there bringing out Paris Hilton? Well, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Paris, Hilton, Paris Hilton came out for Bondi Blonde and Jerry and I used to be, in our younger days, competitive in that area as well. Yeah. And he was sitting at home saying, oh, look at Sam with Paris. He was imagining we're holding hands, tay a tay. She said hello to me twice. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> so he's rung up a mate of mine who's Paris's agent and said, oh, I don't like this. So he's got Tara Reid and he thinks she's just as famous. And, <laughs> And I just can't wait to see what unfolds. I can't wait for Katie Harvey and Jerry Harvey to split up as a result of this. And I'm, my great plan is I'm then going to marry Katie Harvey after a couple of setbacks recently and zoom up that BLW rich list. This is the grand plan, and which Tara Reid is part. 
so I didn't know Tara Reid was supposed to be the well, the she's catalyst. The catalyst. She's okay, the catalyst so. for the karma. Uh, well, anyway, for the karma <laughs> and the cashectomy. It's coming, mate. It's coming. <laughs> <laughs> All right, gentlemen, it looks as though there's going to be lots of uh, romance, not only in the ring, but maybe outside uh, at the Magic Minions. Good luck with that. Thanks for joining us today. See you, guys. Bye. The horses are obviously just a small part of the whole thing. Really. They need their own show, those two. <laughs> they have been long-time great mates as well, for anyone who doesn't know them. And they, uh, they do this all the time. They just slag each other constantly. They're very funny guys. Sing Owen Jerry show. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right, well, let us know if you go and pick up a racehorse. Yeah, right, we'll do. <laughs>